throughout mankind's history, one of the vanishingly few constants has been technological development. Base survival has been the impetus behind this drive towards innovation, initially against the elements and other species, later against our fellow man. From the dawn of agriculture, to the spread of steel, to modern medicine, mankind has cemented a stable foothold on this earth thanks to our tech. Of course, technology has been developed not just to survive, but to thrive. Through our ceaseless ingenuity we have conquered a planet, touched the skies then the stars, and cultivated a standard of living our hunter-gatherer forebears couldn't even dream of. With that said, for all the good it has wrought, technology itself is intrinsically neutral. Only through its ethical and productive application can any technology be considered good. There are myriad ethical, moral, and civilizational misapplications of our technologies, too many to list here. But perhaps the most recent and prevalent example thereof is artificial intelligence. AI is now unavoidable in society. It's seen broad applications ranging from writing computer code to detecting tumors, and every third advert on this truly wonderful platform is some AI-generated monstrosity. While AI has presented itself as some revolutionary tool to meaningfully improve our lives, its adoption has presented much the opposite, slowly but demonstrably dumbing people down, and in the worst cases, driving them insane. So, to discuss AI, we must first narrow down what we're actually talking about here. Artificial intelligence is an exceptionally broad area of science and industry, and in this, we aren't looking at the more niche AI systems. The research-based neural nets analyzing patterns in brain activity, for example, are kind of their own thing and are unambiguously useful. Rather, our focus here is more on the general-use chatbot SKI services like ChatGPT, Gemini, and so forth. Their fundamental issue is not what AI services provide to their users, but what they take away. And here, we turn towards cognitive offloading. Cognitive offloading is a phenomenon where a cognitive or mental task is offloaded to some third party. Cognitive offloading is something we all engage in to some degree. If you ever used a calculator for double-digit multiplication or look something up on Google, you've made some mental task easier. The upshots are obvious. It's a faster and easier route to your intellectual end goal. Laziness is one of humanity's most primary and primal motivators, after all. Furthermore, offloading some of the more menial or tedious cognitive tasks frees up space in your brain for otherwise more pressing matters. Moderation, like all things, is key with cognitive offloading, as one offloads more and more cognitive tasks, reduced knowledge retention and impaired critical thinking skills typically follow. This has been an observed and eminently relatable phenomenon associated with the overuse of search engines like Google, known as Google Effects. In short, the internet contains the sum total of human knowledge, with search engines being the interface there too. Rather than having to commit to remember any piece of knowledge, you can just look it up later. If you develop a total reliance on search engines as a secondary memory bank, you may know where to find knowledge, but you won't meaningfully possess it, and in turn are less equipped to meaningfully synthesize and produce new knowledge. It's not good. Looping back now to AI services, their use as a cognitive offloading tool is exceptional. They offer an immediate, succinct answer to whatever query one may have. In turn, the magnitude of cognitive decline they can induce is extreme. You don't even have to comb through articles and links, you're just given an answer. This level of reliance on AI is, dreadfully, a widespread phenomenon. Everyone in college is writing everything with ChatGPT, and every blue check mouth breather on Twitter is asking Grok to answer literally anything. Unsurprisingly, there has been a spate of papers demonstrating cognitive declines associated with the overutilization of AIs. They are quite literally making you dumber. Naturally, more research needs to be done in this area, no hard conclusions can be drawn, but there's a clear trajectory to this research, and a worrying one at that. This over-reliance on AI is made all the more concerning, given the unavoidable inaccuracy in AI. Here, we need to go a bit deeper on how major AI chatbots work. ChatGPT is the perfect example, as its function is in the name, GPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's a form of large language model utilized by many major AI chatbots. The exacts of their function are beyond the scope of this video, along with my own knowledge. The relevant part here is just the pre-trained component. Now, AIs are not spontaneously intelligent. They need to be provided and guided with a set of data before they can serve any predictive or generative function. This is the process of pre-training. The pre-prefix is something of a misnomer, however, as many of these GPTs are undergoing a sort of perpetual training. As new information is added to the internet, be it in the form of a new book, article, or YouTube video, AIs are scraping it for data and feeding it into their datasets. Said data is not limited to solely man-made creations. AIs have been pumping out ungodly amounts of content for a few years now, and that's all getting fed back into the machine. While AI-generated content is nowhere near as 
abstract as it was near the start of the decade, it's still imperfect, and on more concrete matters, inaccurate. Now, AIs are reasonably accurate. They wouldn't be utilized to the extent they now are without getting at least something right, but they aren't perfect. Look no further than the AI-generated recipes calling for insecticides as a sandwich ingredient. Look no further than the legal documents constantly getting pulled for referencing non-existent AI-generated cases. An AI will stake demonstrable falsehoods, hallucinations, with the same confidence it does the truth. The only reason they're seen as nominally accurate is because there's a statistical bias towards the latter. As more nonsense and AI fabrications get dumped onto the net and back into AI training data, however, that bias will shift in an undesirable direction. While a respectable chunk of the population is increasingly wary of AI, its produce is increasingly unavoidable. AI is just that ubiquitous now. The statistical semi-truths spouted by AIs are set to infect not just its own training data, but our own information sphere. While the most ridiculous examples of AI incoherence will likely be pruned by human intervention, plenty of fabrications that seem true enough will surely slip through the cracks, eroding at the very foundation of our knowledge. While we should be cautious towards AI in light of its inaccuracy, you have plenty of people now enthralled to this new technology, thanks in large part to the sycophancy in AI. AI chat services, at the end of the day, amount to highly advanced chatbots. Sure, they can write up your college essays, tell you how to fix a car, or obliterate your research career with a quick prompt, but that's about it. They're potentially useful tools, but nothing more. However, AIs are imbued with a strange mystique. Society's perception of artificial intelligence in a more sci-fi sense is of something incredibly intelligent and sharp. Something more reliable. The sense of reliability is played into by the actual operators of these AI services. Their flagship AIs typically have some level of sycophancy towards their users baked into their programming. Unmodified, AIs will heap praise upon your ideas, tell you how awesome you are, and uncritically concur that your girlfriend totally exists. She just goes to a different school after all. Unrestrained sycophancy and affirmation of this sort can, at best, give people the wrong impression on their thoughts and ideas, and at worst, actively feed into delusions. And we're seeing that worst case scenario now. Cases of ChatGPT induced psychosis, a self explanatory, sad phenomenon, are becoming commonplace, and the cases themselves are depressing. From paranoid delusions of grandeur precipitating divorce to making people believe they're Neo in the Matrix, the implantation, then affirmation of abject delusions has ruined lives. An adjacent phenomenon, an adjacent issue, is the interplay between AI and actual mental health conditions. Therapy and mental health services, be they from established sources or mediocre imitations, are expensive, and thus access to them has historically been limited. With the development of AIs that can serve many roles and ostensibly answer any question, their use as sources of therapy would be a logical move. Unfortunately, AIs have proven at best lackluster and at worst dangerous towards individuals suffering from mental health conditions. Looking back at the pre-training element of these AIs, the data from which they are pre-trained is just human writings and communications, and all the biases therein get baked into the AI. Our society's unfortunate, yet general stigmatization towards mental health is implicit in many AIs. Individuals suffering from alcoholism or schizophrenia are less likely to find a neutral, helpful voice in AI. Furthermore, due to the sycophancy and affirmative tendencies seen in AIs, anyone actually experiencing some sort of psychotic break or schizophrenic episode is going to have their psychoses affirmed. People have died because of this. This thoughtless misapplication and mass promulgation of AI. In addition to actively feeding into people's delusions, there is a critical lack of nuance from such AIs. If you were to tell ChatGPT you were miserable and hated your life, then ask where the nearest tall bridge is, it'd give you the exact address, rather than forward you to crisis services. An important question that must be asked regarding the sycophancy found in AI is why. Why are they so sycophantic? The answer is quite straightforward and should come as no surprise. A user constantly receiving affirmation and adulation from an AI is far more likely to keep using the service, and far more likely to renew their monthly subscription. Anecdotally, those who have fallen into a pitiful spiral of AI delusion are some of these AI companies' most reliable customers. I don't think this is a gambling or casino situation, where the degenerate addicts make up half the industry's revenue, but the mere existence of such conscienceless profiteering off people their products have poisoned is nonetheless disgusting. These companies are aware of the genuine psychological harm their services have inflicted. You have OpenAI actually hiring psychiatrists now to fine-tune their AIs, and hopefully reduce their psychologically insidious elements. 
Of course, this isn't being done out of any moral scruples or honest concerns around their own technology, but to have fewer articles written about how AI is driving people insane. They're just going to continue optimizing for profit, finding the exact amount of addictive sycophancy they can inject into their services without engendering scathing social outcry. It'll look bad to investors, after all. AI as a technology is still in its relative infancy. It's being applied and used in a whole host of environments to great, terrible, and unforeseen effect. In short, AI's application has been far too callous and short-sighted, and it needs to be reined in in one form or another. I have no faith whatsoever for the AI industry to earnestly reckon with what it has wrought. To believe any industry will self-regulate in the interest of their consumers is genuinely delusional. The current administration isn't even going to try and touch AI, but it's something that will deserve our focus in due time. In the meantime, the cognitive declines and induced insanity courtesy of AI must not be forgotten, nor the names and faces of those who foisted it upon us.